I've installed two EFI units on my 1975 Ford Bronco and I want to share with you some of the mistakes that I've made and some of the things that I've learned along the way. Welcome back to the garage, the place where we are making your classic car your dream classic car. If this is your first time here, I would love to have you subscribe. I'm putting out how-to videos for the weekend mechanic and providing some of the EFI tech for the classic car community. I'm totally a weekend mechanic. I make mistakes. I do things wrong, but that's why I'm making this video because I've made a lot of mistakes installing these EFI units on my 1970. Ford Bronco and I want to share some of that, that those mistakes with you so hopefully you don't make the same mistakes that I did. If you have installed EFI on your classic car I want you to leave a comment below. What was the biggest thing that you learned? What was the thing that you it was like an aha moment for you and if you haven't installed EFI yet you still have a carburetor on your engine what are you thinking about? What are some of the questions that you have? I would love to help you if I can. So today what we're talking about is is what you should be looking at before you even consider buying an EFI. So the first thing that you need to be aware of if you're looking to buy an EFI system is the kits are all universal. Like I know that, you know, this the kits that I put on here, they're made for a Ford 302 engine. But really when you break it down, there's so many Ford 302 engines. It could be for a Mustang, it could be for an F100, it could be for whatever it is. I mean, the 302 lasted for so many years. Number two, uh, these you know electronic fuel injection units are really gonna magnify the problems that your engine has. Like really, your, your carburetor is kind of masking a lot of these issues. Like you can get your carburetor, your engine to run with a carburetor, you know, just by uh, tweaking the timing a little bit and adjusting some screws but when you put an electronic fuel injection on there with all these sensors and all this stuff that's running through it if there's an issue with a component on your engine then it's not gonna run right. And you know, it, down to like if you have cheap spark plug wires, it might, like that electrical current running through the spark plug wire might affect the ECU in the throttle body. Or you know, if your headers are leaking, then it's gonna allow fresh air in, it's gonna mess with the O2 sensor, and it's not gonna run right. And I'll talk about that later, but really these units don't cover up anything. It's not like a, a magic bullet that's going to fix all your engine's problems. Really, it's going to point out all the engine problems and you're going to have to fix them. The third thing is there's going to be additional costs. There's going to be extra cost with no matter what kit you buy. When I first got my Fitec, I, you know, it was like I could get EFI for under a thousand dollars. Like that was my thought. But then I bought the kit and however much that was, a thousand dollars. Then I had to buy a new intake manifold, then a new distributor, then new fuel lines, and then an electronic fuel pump. And it adds up. I think it ended up all costing me over $2,000 when it was all said and done, because really it's not just the throttle body that you're buying. Now with this Edelbrock ProFlow that I have, it comes with uh, the intake manifold, it comes with a distributor. So make sure you think about that. Like it's not just the throttle body that you're buying, or it's not just the, the EFI unit that you're buying. There are other things that you need to look at when you're buying this unit. Now I have links below for the Fitec kit that I put on here, the Edelbrock ProFlow kit, and a Holly Sniper. So you can kind of get an idea for how much each one of those costs. But keep in mind that the unit isn't always the only thing that you need. Number four is really those uh, units that claim that you can use your original fuel delivery system. Man, those units are too good to be true. Do not buy one of those units. You need to replace your mechanical fuel pump with an electronic fuel pump. You know, if you think about it, your mechanical fuel pump, it's pumping like seven PSI to your carburetor because your carburetor doesn't need a ton of fuel pressure. But these electronic fuel pumps are pumping like 
30, 40, 50, 60 PSI. And these units need it. I think my, you know, Edelbrock right now, it needs like 43 PSI to run properly. And that mechanical fuel pump, I don't care how much fuel you're gonna get in that little sump, it's not gonna be enough. So when you're planning out your EFI system, you need to make sure that you plan for new fuel lines, a new fuel pump, and sometimes even a fuel pressure regulator or doing some extra wiring in there to get your fuel pump to work properly. Now the fifth thing is the exhaust system. And I talked about this a little bit before, but that O2 sensor is the thing that is reading your engine's air fuel ratio, the AFR. And if your O2 sensor isn't getting a clean reading through your exhaust system that's coming out of your engine, well then it's not gonna get your engine the proper air fuel ratio. That's the thing that is self-learning about all these units is that O2 sensor is reading the exhaust as it comes out of the engine and it's making adjustments on the fly. It's self-learning, uh, you know, based on what your fuel parameters are that you want. But <laughs> like, I have a 1975 Ford Bronco. Like, this thing has been mudded. It's been in the snow. It's been in the salt from the snow. Like, my exhaust <laughs> is not in great shape, or it wasn't in great shape when I put my first Phytech unit on. And then uh, on top of that, like for some reason, Phytech thought that you could just put clamps around the O2 sensor, like it was a whole mess. But basically I struggled so much with my EFI system because my exhaust system wasn't up to snuff. So that's something that you gotta think about. You know, it's an additional cost that you might have to spend or it's just something that you might be like, why is my unit continually running too rich? Well, it's because it's getting fresh air coming in through an exhaust leak and so it's overcompensating and dumping in more fuel. So, you know, there's things like that that people tend to point the finger at the unit uh, when really there are just some issues with a classic car that need to be addressed before these units can get put on. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. I hope that you can save some time, hopefully some money by not making the same mistakes that I've made. Uh, and if you wanna watch some of those other videos, I have the Edelbrock install video, the Phytech install video, uh, and then I have a comparison between the two on which one I feel like is better. Uh, definitely check those videos out. And if there's any questions that you have, anything that you are curious about, leave it in the comments below. I appreciate you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.